has given us he is the one who has given us the message therefore we must as preachers we must preach the message of the king to the people mm -hmm. because it is authorized by god first timothy chapter 2 and verse number 7 and then you have other scriptures like romans 10 14 to 18 And the third one, the most popular one, is the word evangelist. Are you still following me? Yes, sir. All right. The word evangelist comes from the Greek word euangelistes, which simply means a messenger of good. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 12. Uh, God, Christ gave some to be evangelists, to bear his good message, the gospel, which means good news. In 1 Timothy 4, 5, Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Paul's challenge was to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, according to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 2. Now, do you have any questions or comments you want to make on what we have looked at so far? Huh? Um... Not right now, sir. Not, not right now. Because oh. what I have can say for like another time when we dive, when you dig in deeper. All right. Now look at the next slide. Diverting the Lord's heralds. The preacher's work has a short and simple description. But a large and vital scope. Men who are dissatisfied with God's simple plan have divides other roles. So they have call the preacher the pastor or the shepherd or the counselor. But the preacher is not any of those. A pastor is a shepherd. That is an elder or a bishop or an overseer. This is a different role and a different work. The pastor or the elder is the shepherd and oversee the flock watching out for the souls of men, Acts chapter 20, verses 17 and 28, and Hebrews 13, 17. Slide number five. Who is the preacher continued? A preacher appoints men who are qualified to do the work of a shepherd. But a preacher does not do the shepherd, should not be doing the shepherd's work. He has sufficient work of his own. Also, a gospel preacher is not a deacon or caretaker of the church property. Now, in a lot of instances, that may happen. Deacons are selected to serve, to do the work of servants. Excuse me a minute. So, okay, you have to stay inside. So that's slide number five. Let's take a look at slide number six.
Slide number six, the preacher and the local work. What is the relationship between the preacher and the local church? I mean, you attend a congregation at Willardine, so you have seen that. Many think of the preacher as the church's employee or servant. And so they may say things like, we pay the preacher so we can tell him what to do. If I want, I can call him and send him to the supermarket for me. If I want, I can call him and send him to the pharmacy. No, those are not the works of the preacher. The preacher can do those things out of his love for the brethren. Mm, yeah, but those are not the um, like those are not the job description of the preacher. Amen, sir. Or if he's a minister, those are not the job description. All right, good, good, good. But that that doesn't that doesn't mean that as a minister or a preacher, you are above any any of the members at all. Because if you if you want to lend a helping hand, you can you you can help clean or anything like that. If you know if you feel if you're not too busy. That's right. Very good point. Yeah. Now the people throw contributions, and in a lot of instances, the money from the treasury, some of the money from the treasury is used to support the preacher. All right, look, there's a scripture that we want to consider. Second Timothy chapter two. Verses three and four. If you have your Bible, you could look at that. Second Timothy chapter two, verses three and four. As we go to slide number seven. Okay. You have Bible with you? Yes, sir. If you find it, you can read what it says. Second Timothy 2, 3, and 4. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses uh, 3 and 4. Said, Do therefore in, in, ensure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that worried entangling himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a, uh, to be a soldier. All right, good. So preachers are accountable to the Lord and entrusted to do his work. And the message is that from these two verses is that the preacher must not entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him, that is Jesus, who has chosen him to be a soldier. So here the, pre the preacher is compared to being a soldier. Uh, as the Lord did with the Old Testament priests, he uses his people's offerings to provide for his servants. And as you said, the preacher is not above the, the evangelist is not above the church members. They have a very good scriptural relationship um, and the Lord commands the preacher to preach the gospel and those who hear the gospel to support him. Together they have fellowship in the gospel of Christ. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verses 6 through 14. All right, first Corinthians chapter nine, verse six to four, fourteen. You want me to read everything? No, just read the first few verses. 
from about six six to ten. Okay, so it said that, or I only and Barnabas have, have not the power to, uh, to forbid working. Who go it out? A warfare anytime at his own um, charges. Who planted a vineyard and eat it not of the fruit, therefore, who or who feed it a flock and eat it not to the milk of the flock. Say I give the things as a man, or say not uh, the law the same also. For for it is written in the law of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of ox that treadeth out of the corn. Does God take care of oxen? Or, or send ye it all together for our sake? For our um, sakes, no doubt. This is written that he that Plotted shall sow in hope, and that he that treaded in hope should be partaker of this hope. All right, so in this passage, Paul is saying that, for example, a farmer, when he plants his ground, he doesn't sell off or give away everything, he eats some from it too. And so it is with the preacher, the preacher does not go to plant his own vineyard and does not eat of it. So this is not just um, a physical illustration. Okay, the, that is why the church has a responsibility to support the preacher. And there are a couple of other scriptures. On your own time, you could look at Philippians 1, 5 through 7. And Philippians 4, 15 through 19, when you have time. All right, let's take a look at the next slide, slide eight. Duties of a Preacher by Dennis Dayton. All right, number one, definition of a preacher. You want to read that? Yes, sir. Oh. All right, the definition of a preacher. Yes, sir. A preacher is one who delivers religious sermon based on Christian doctrine to groups of people. The preacher is one who is called by, by the gospel. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. And must be a man of faith. All right, so that is important. When you get a chance, look at 2 Thessalonians 2.14. It says that we are called by the gospel. And notice again, he says, you must be a man of faith. All right, look at the, the next um, paragraph. A preacher who leads a congregation. You want to read that piece? A preacher, a preacher who leads a congregation and is called the minister usually has formal biblical training from a school of preaching, a theological institute, or a school of biblical study. Study, yeah. That's like JSP. Right. But I mean, it. That, that all those are good, but the most important thing is that he must have the knowledge of the Bible. Mm -hmm. All right. Look at the second, look at the next one qualities of an effective preacher. Quality of an effective preacher. In addition to being, being a man of strong faith, a preacher needs specific qualities to be effective. If you feel called to be a preacher, Ask yourself these questions. All right, go to the next, next slide. Um, it said, am I authentic? As right. an effective preacher, you have to represent uh, your true self and, and your authentic 
understanding of faith. You can't pretend to be someone you're not or someone you believe others expect you to be. All right, so that is important. You want to comment a little bit on that? All right, um, no. As we are, as we are at um, School of Preaching, right, it, it, it is our responsibility really to, to develop our faith, you know, as, as faithful man, you know, because, because, because the, the, the Jamaica School of Preaching is, is teaching us to, is training faithful men to serve in the kingdom. You understand? So, so our prayer, our prayer lifestyle have to be in, in, intact and uh, reading of the scripture, it, it has to be developed so, so that people may see our fruit. And, All right. and, and so we can't, we can't be, our, you know, like when we're in our room, we're doing something else. Um, we're, 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 we're doing wrong. And then in, in the light, we're behaving like, 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 like we're good. Even though none of us, even though none of us is not good, you know? But, but, but we can't, we can't tend to preach, preach what we're not practicing. Yeah. All right, good. So we cannot be pretenders. We are unhypocritical. We have to be true. And I think that is what that word means. Thanks for that thing. All right, B, look at B now. B, can I preach in a way that it is useful? Preaching doesn't mean using the opportunity to demonstrate your knowledge of the Bible. It's helping people to understand the meaning of the Bible and applying its lesson to everyday life. Okay, so it's not just to show off my knowledge of the Bible. It is more than that. I have to help people to understand the meaning of the Bible and apply it to their everyday life. All right, see? I am an engaging speaker. You need to connect to people by talking to them not merely reading from notes, humor and storytelling ability are useful if they, if they come naturally to you. College classes, non-credit speech courses and organizations such as Toastmasters can help you to improve your public speaking skills. So then that means that it said like, like after, after preaching school, it's okay to have to, to get further knowledge. Yes, man, even while you're in preaching school. Even while so that if some, so that if somebody in, in the community, if there's a graduation in a community and you are given the opportunity to get up and speak, use the opportunity. Yes, sir. So every opportunity you get, don't not just to preach but to speak at functions and all that, use them wisely. Yes, sir. And then the last point, point D. Can I preach to everyone? Said it is important to make an effort to connect to everyone in the congregation. It is easy to talk to those in, in, the, in the front row and those who really profess their faith, readily, okay. It can be challenging to talk to those who have questions or might be considered out, outsiders to the congregation. Okay, so who are you preaching to? Everybody in the audience. If, for example, you got up to preach at Mona, it is not just the people in the front row, but the people in the back row, you have to try to reach them as well. You need to have to know something about them. When you get up to speak in chapel, it's not just the brothers who are sitting in the audience or the teachers. 
but you have to reach out to those who are online and as well lead the men as well as the women so i don't just get up and say good morning brothers i have to recognize the ladies as well all right any any further questions and i think that's it for this lesson this morning you have any further comments or points you want to raise um so sir it's just like when I worship at Bulsavani yesterday, right? I haven't seen the Virgin down there for a very long while. And yes. I was able to remove that nervousness that I did have, you know, and, and, and speak to them. Because I was just able to be myself and, 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 and speak and speak to them and, and just, just to like speak to everyone before I leave courses. So, so it, it's just like what you have to say. Every, every opportunity that we get to, to speak, we have to take it, you know? That's it. Yep. Yes, man, that is true. All right, check your email for the questions at the end of this lesson. Okay, sir. And as soon as you get those questions, you can answer them and um, email them back to me at my email address. Okay, sir. And remember to check on the book. The preacher and his work in the online library. Okay, sir. And I will email you the chapters which you need to start reading for this term. Yes, sir. We're going to stop here today because they're going to get ready to fix up for chapel just now. And as I said to you, anytime, you know, if you want to talk to me by email or WhatsApp or phone or voice message or whatever it is feel free to talk okay okay all right take it easy we'll talk again later all right sir